Good afternoon. Welcome to Annunciation Parish. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant for today's, today's Mass is Father Steve. Before we begin our celebration, there are a few announcements. On this Mother's Day, we remember our own mothers, but also the Virgin Mary, who is mother of us all. We will honor her with a coronation after this Mass this Saturday, today, at Holy Spirit, and this weekend at 9 o'clock Mass on Monday, May 16th at Holy Rosary. We will be putting together a co-ed volleyball team to play in the Diocesan Summer League. The team is open to all students in grades 7 through 12 and is open to both parishioners and their friends. Games begin on June 13th and run through mid-August. Please see the bulletin or website for information on signing up. We will hold events for our Modified Spring Festival. Putin and Rape will be for sale June 16th through the 18th, and the golf tournament will be on June 3rd, where two Patriots tickets will be raffled. Students in grades 8 through 12 are welcome to join us as we host the Diocesan Amplify Night on May 14th here at Holy Spirit from 5 to 8. Please see the bulletin or website. Please also contact Mrs. Sweeney at the office by Tuesday to sign up. Our gathering hymn is number 635, Morning Has Broken. Please stand. <clears throat> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today, as we continue through our Easter celebration, we hit this Sunday, which we also remember mothers very especially. And at the end of Mass, we'll have a special blessing for all the mothers present, and then we will head out to do a coronation of our other mother, Mary, mother of us all, as we go out to the statue there, all who wish to join um, can come with us. And I'll let you know more about that when we get to that point. So now, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you lead your flock to eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you know our hearts as a shepherd knows his sheep. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise 
praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. O God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord, you, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath day, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it, and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, now we turn to the Gentiles. For the, so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city, stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Lord 
is good, his kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will no longer they will not excuse me, they will not hunger or thirst anymore nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life, giving water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. So what's this talking about sheep? This uh, shows up several times in scripture. We hear about God presenting himself as a shepherd. Our psalm today says, we are his people, the flock he tends. The 23rd psalm, you know, the very famous, the Lord is my shepherd, and he leads me to pathways and all that. Jesus talks about himself too as a shepherd and us as sheep in uh, many occasions. But what is he trying to say? What does this mean? What does it mean to be sheep and following the shepherd? Well, sheep, as you might know, are rather passive animals. They follow where they are led. They go where the shepherd tells them to go without really thinking about it. And they need someone to lead them. 
They need someone to show them where the food is, to get water for them, to help protect them. They're very vulnerable to predators. It may feel funny that God likens us to sheep. You may feel a little put out by that. You know, you may say, hey, I'm no sheep. No one leads me around. I take care of things myself, make my own decisions. I pick what's right for me, I know. No one has to tell me what to think or what to believe. But we really don't have all the answers. You know, you don't come out of the womb knowing all you know, thinking the way you do. And from a psychological perspective, it feels that everything in our head is our own opinion. You know, we think, well, I have come to this myself, I have formed all this by myself, no one led me, I just kind of do it myself. But, really, you've taken in a lot from outside sources. A lot of things have come to, in that we've built our opinions on. If it wasn't the case that you needed to learn from outside sources, then you wasted a heck of a lot of time in school. And your parents wasted a lot of time and effort getting you through school. Learning itself is a process of being led to answers, to hearing explanations from various voices. We do have a choice in what voices that we listen to, but studies show that we tend to align our thoughts much more than we realize to the things that we pay attention to. And we pay attention to these things and we think we're independently coming to it, but really we tend to lean into those things. And that may come as a surprise to us. We're actually more like sheep than we think we are. We follow a lot more than we think we do. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Since we're all kind of sheep-like in many ways, Jesus is saying that his voice is the one to listen to. His voice is the one to follow. It leads us somewhere other ones cannot, to something unique. We're going to tend to follow some voice. He says, listen to my voice. There's lots of voices out there. Most of you of them tell you that any other voice but mine is wrong. You know, we see that with all these different kinds of opinions out there. Even those who promote openness tend to also be very intolerant of views that are opposed to theirs. Some of you know that before I became a priest, I was a therapist for many years. And what I heard a lot then and now are people, you know, stressing, trying to find this magic formula to happiness. You know, the happiness that we all seek at some deep level, and they're trying to find it in there, and they'll tell me, well, I heard this, I saw that. You know, they say this, and, you know, you have to do this, and if you have a little more artichoke, you know, soaked in rutabaga juice, you can live another two or three days, I heard. So I've been doing that every day, and, and it's like just trying to listen to all these things, just searching. You know, and, and many voices that we can turn to for an answer are saying, you know, do it your way. You just do it for yourself. Don't let anyone else tell you what to do, and you'll be happy but then they tell you what to do. Don't listen to anyone, just do this. You know, and, and I think we don't realize we're actually following along with this thinking we're much freer than we are. You know, but you're always making a choice to follow some voices, and the question is just which one are you going to decide to follow? Our faith tells us that following Jesus is the way to a true freedom. And other voices in this world disparage the truth of God and wrongly say that to follow Jesus, you have to give up your freedom because you're doing what God says. I say, see, see, if you listen to what anyone tells you to do, you're not giving up freedom. Well, God says, do what I tell you to do, and you actually gain freedom. See? So we're making a decision 
to follow the voice of the one who made us, the one who knows what is happiness and contentment, what we have to do to get to happiness and contentment. We hear in the second reading that the uh, ultimate place of where following God leads is that they will not hunger or thirst anymore. For the Lamb who is the center of the throne will shepherd them, lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye. You don't know how much human pain and suffering I've seen because people put their faith in this voice that promises a, a quick, easy path to happiness, and it didn't deliver. So now you get even double stressed. I didn't get there, but I was supposed to. This was supposed to work. He did the rutabaga juice. It was supposed to work. The stuff didn't work. But, you know, that's really an immature way to think about God and faith, to think about it that way. And some people leave their faith in Jesus because they think Jesus is trying to give a quick fix too. Just do these couple of things and I promise you'll be happy. But I wasn't happy. He doesn't say that. It's the funniest thing. People say, why? I did all that stuff that God said and I wasn't blissfully happy. Where'd you hear that? Well, that's what you're supposed to. That's not what God says. Jesus, in fact, tells us that there's going to be a lot of sufferings in life. He doesn't make promises that are designed to draw you in with these expectations. You know, he's not a used car salesman. He's not trying to do that. Sorry, he didn't use car salesman out here. Mean to <laughs> insult anyone. <laughs> I tell you, you know, listening to his voice, I get myself in a lot less problems, a lot less uncomfortable situations. And I and others have painfully found out that things work better when we follow his voice and we're led to contentment and not and able to get things you can't get from worldly things like money, sex, power, and doing whatever you want. All that thing really doesn't get you the peace and contentment that following the Lord does. Many people are actually pretty content to be the sheep of the Good Shepherd, knowing He actually does provide, He actually does guide, and where He ultimately leads us is to a spiritual life, an ultimate sense of satisfaction, ultimate fullness that no one can deliver no plan of someone, no exercise or diet program or philosophy of meditation is going to get you to. Something only God can give us. And you know, you may doubt that because others have told you they don't find proof that satisfies them. And if you believe it, you're giving up your freedom. But they're actually telling you what to believe. They're telling you, you have to believe what I believe. You don't have to. You can believe these promises of God. You can believe the voice of that good shepherd. You can believe in your heart that God has answers that we human beings don't have. And that we listen to that voice. We listen to the voice that has been coming down to us, the church for all these centuries. As your life goes on, you have to continue to select the voices to follow. And I pray that one thing that you learn is to search the faith that is before you. This faith that God has given us. This faith that teaches us much more than we can get from anywhere else. It's a faith in the voice of Jesus. It's a faith in the one who wants to shepherd you to the peace and satisfaction in the next life that you were built for, that you were made for, and which the world and your own exercise of your freedom cannot ever get you. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born in the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary in the beginning. For our sake, he was crucified.
crucified and their conscience pilot, he suffered death in his very rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess on the baptism of the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For God, by his gentle voice, wishes to lead us to pastures. And so let us now, trusting in his guidance, offer these prayers. For the church, that we may faithfully witness in word and deed to the dignity of every human life through comprehensive care of mothers and their children, we pray to the Lord. For our nation, that we create a society in which legal protection of human life is accompanied by profound care for mothers and their children, we pray to the Lord. For mothers and grandmothers everywhere, that they may be always blessed by the Good Shepherd as they strive to lead their families, we pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who are undergoing the ravages of war in, the Ukra in Ukraine, that Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, may prevail in bringing an end to this carnage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, this flock of Christ, and for those among us with vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that they may be ever receptive to the voice of the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they find salvation in God's everlasting life, especially Michael LeBlanc and Judith Marceau, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear the prayers that we bring before you as we follow you peacefully in this life. Grant us and shepherd us those things that you wish us to have that we truly need. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our song of preparation is number 466, My King of Love, The King of Love, My Shepherd is, number 466.
brought me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. We pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. story of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death O Lord until you come again Therefore Lord 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially for Michael LeBlanc and Judith Marceau, and for all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Our communion hymn is Like a Shepherd, number 620.
shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Right, and so, as I said, first we'll have a special blessing for the mothers, and then on the way out, um, after me, we'll follow Ms. Cribbin, Ms. Cribbin who's going to be um, crowning the statue of the Blessed Virgin outside. And so you're all welcome to follow after that. Anyone who'd like to join us, follow down to the statue. And these sheets here, which should be in your bulletins, have the uh, prayer we will be saying out there, um, and also the text of the song being sung on the way out there. So um, I would ask, at this, for this point, just for everyone except the mothers to be seated, have mothers remain standing so that um, we can part a special blessing on all the mothers. O oh Lord God, who were pleased to give the great gift to mothers to bring forth life into this world, they participate with you in your great work of creation, they care and they nourish their children, they bring them forth and bring them up to be strong and healthy, always caring for their needs, always loving them, always caring for them through their lives. We ask you to send your blessing down upon these mothers. Help us to always be grateful for the love and the constancy with which they care for us. Help us always be grateful for the great gift of our mothers to us. May your blessing rest upon them. Amen. Amen. Everyone, please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. The Mass is ended. Amen. Please join me in singing Immaculate Mary, number 201. Also on the sheets. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. 